Hello guys and welcome to another one of my Unity game development series here on YouTube. In these game development series or in this game development series what we are going to create is a ball shooting game. So as you can see here we have a nice background and we have our player with the gun. So well he's with the gun you know something awesome is gonna happen and here we have a bouncing ball. If I select the ball we see that we have our ball script attached on it and we can well check if we want the ball to move left or move right. Currently I have move right checked on my ball and if I run the game we see that the ball is bouncing. When it touches well the wall on the right side it will change the direction and go on the left side and the same thing will happen or vice versa when it touches on the left side. Our player can shoot and we see that he shoots rocket surprisingly and we can also hear the sound effects and if I shoot the ball it will pop onto two smaller balls. So this is the largest ball if I shoot it we see that we have two large balls popping and they continue to bounce if I shoot them again we see that they are popping until we destroy all balls. So well again let me just play the game and see if I can win actually. And of course we can die if we die we are going to restart the game so let me just try not to die and we can also shoot multiple times so not just once and let me just try to win on my old game which i'm not able to and we see that i have died and we have restarted the game so we are going to take a look at how can we create our game so here we are going to create a lot of awesome stuff like our player walking shooting we see all of these animations anyway i don't want to stall let's begin with the video here we are in a new project because as always we are going to recreate the game that you just saw from scratch the first thing that i'm going to do is import my assets so here i have my sounds and my sprites i'm going to simply drag and drop them here in my unity editor I'm also going to right click and create a new folder which I'm going to name scenes and inside of it holding command and press S or control S or simply go under file so here go under file and then click on save scene in order to save the scene. When I say command S that's on Mac when I say control S that's on Windows and here in the scenes folder we are going to well save our scene and name it game play. What I'm also going to do is create here another folder which is going to be our animations folder and inside of it I'm going to create another folder for player animations. So here we are going to store our player animations. If I go in my sprites folder here if I click on the player I'm going to override, override it here and this is not a requirement but as I said well in my previous tutorials I'm used to doing this so I'm just going to well correct these import settings here set the sprite mode to multiple that's a requirement so set the sprite mode to multiple go here in the sprite editor or click on it when the sprite mode is set on multiple and now we can slice our player in order to slice the player simply click on this button here in the top left corner where it says slice and we are going to well not change these settings so the automatic slicing is going to be well set and simply click on slice and we see that now we have each individual part of our player so each player image here is now an individual part for itself when you well when you have sliced the player like this simply click apply right here and that will apply to this prefab and now if we go back here and click on this drop down list we see that we have our player sprites and now we are going to create our player animation so here let me just go and find so our walk animations that is so our walk animation is from 0 up to well image player 7 so select well all of these images so simply hold shift and select all of these so from player 0 up to player 7 and simply drag and drop them so from player 7 again to player 0 drag and drop them here in our scenes folder that will create those animations now here we have those animations so this right here this file is an animation controller and this right here it says player this is our animation that is so I'm going to name this one walk animation and I'm going to select both of them and simply store them here in our player animations if we run the game now we are going to see our player walking so this is his animation 
Now, in order to create other animations for our player, what we need to do and here again, so yeah, this is one, the walking. Now, if we want to create the idle and the shoot animation, what we need to do is we need to open this animator or animation window. If you don't see it here, simply go under window and find it here, click on animation and it will open. So again, go here under window, click on the animation and it will open. It might open like this, so it can be a window separate. So you can simply drag it and position it wherever you like. So simply drag it. I will position this one right here because in order to create our animations, we need to, well, have it here because we need to drag and drop our other sprites. And I'm also going to change here, well, the name of our player in the hierarchy panel to simply player. So here we have our walk animation. Now, in order to create another animation, we see here where it says walk. So here we can click on this button and we can click on create new clip. So simply here, I'm going to click on create new clip and this one I'm going to store in our animations and player animations. And this is going to be our idle animation. And for our idle animation, I'm going to set the samples here on 12 and I'm simply going to drag and drop our player zero sprite. This is going to be our idle animation. What we also need is, well, our shoot animation. So I'm going to go here, create a new clip again, and I'm going to name this one shoot and store it in our player animations and simply select, well, the images from eight. 10 or excuse me 8 9 10 and 11 drag and drop them here and that will create those animations set the sample rate at 12 again and what we can also do is go here in our animator and you need to select the player in the hierarchy panel so also for our animation if you want to well manipulate them select the player in the hierarchy panel so that will open now here in our animator and also if you don't have the animator go under window and click on the animator and it will practically open again. And also you can drag and drop and reposition. So the window wherever you want it to be. And I can simply remove also my animation window right here. So when I'm finished, I usually will move them back. So you can well rearrange them however you like. And also these are our animations right here in our animator window. Now, before we start manipulating our animations in the animator window, I'm going to go back here in our animation window and we're going to set the samples here 30 for our shoot animation and samples are frames per second. So how many frames per second does it take for this animation to play? So we are going to set 30 frames per second. And also I'm going to do the same thing for our idle. So set the sample rate at 30 and also for our walk animation, set the sample rate at 30. What I'm also going to do is here, we can zoom a little bit. And what I'm also going to do, as I said, this first animation right here. So the first frame, I'm going to delete it. So simply, well, delete it from here. And we can select all of these other frames and well, just move them back because we don't want our idle or the first frame to be our player standing. We did not change anything for if we well play the game now we see our player is moving but we see that he's walking at a much faster rate we are going to fix this don't worry so simply change that and simply save it and now in our animation panel what we are going to do is we are going to select these animations and also this player animation which is the first animation rename it here in the inspector panel this is our walk animation so simply rename it to walk animation as I said here we are going to set our idle animation to be the default one so simply well select or right click it and click on set this default layer state and what this actually means is if we run the game now we see that our player is walking and we see his animation playing here the default animation when we start the game is his walk animation now we don't want our player to well walk right away when we run the game we want him to walk when we program him to walk so we want our idle to be the default one and i can click on or right click on the idle animation and set as layer default state if i run the game now we don't see our player walking instead he is simply while well, standing now the first thing that i would like to fix is we saw well our player walk animation was too fast and i can set the default layer state again back to the walk and we see that our player is walking as crazy what we can do here is we can select this animation and here we have the speed for it so here in the inspector panel we see that we have this speed 
let's set it at 0.5 that means he will walk well half of the time slower as he well walked so one is 100 percent 0.5 is 50 percent of the speed so if i run it again now we see that our player walks a little bit more smoothly he's not walking like crazy if i pump up the animation we see how he how he is walking so we are going to set it at 0.5 and also for the shoot animation we are going to set it at 1.7 and I'm going to set our default animation to be idle again now in order to go or move from one animation to another that's called a transition so in order to transition from idle to walk or from walk back to idle or from idle to shoot so on and so forth what we can do is we can create parameters here so here we have this layers and we have parameters near them so click on parameters because we need to create parameters and then we can use those parameters in our code in order to well manipulate these animations so we can click on this plus sign right here and we have well four parameters that we can check or that we can use so we have a float an integer a boolean and a trigger so i'm going to use a boolean and i'm going to name this one walk and i'm also going to create one more parameter a boolean that's going to be shoot so we have our walk and we have our shoot parameters so how can we use our parameters in order to transition between animations well we can right click on the animations for example from idle and click on this make transition and now we have this line here and we can point to the animation where we want to transition so we want to go from idle to walk and simply click on it and we also want to go from walk to idle again and we want to go from shoot back to idle now in order to set up these parameters what we can do is now you can select this transition so you can select it as an individual and this is the transition from idle to walk animation and now in the inspector panel right here we see that we have these conditions and we can set them up so i can click on this plus sign and now the condition is when walk so our boolean parameter is equal to true we are going to go from idle to walk animation the same way we are going to go back from walk to idle when our walk is false so practically when walk is false we are going from walk to idle and we are going from idle to walk when walk is true and also we are going to go back from the shoot animation to our idle animation when our shoot parameter right here is equal to false and we are not going to go from idle to shoot because we are going to simply play the animation right away from our code anyway this is how can we also use these parameters in our code which i will point out when the time comes but practically we are going from the shoot animation back to the idle when shoot is equal to false and also we are going from walk to idle when walk is false and from idle to walk when walk is true practically we are going to end it here and continue in the next video because this video is getting too long so in this video we have created our player animations next we are going to add rigid bodies colliders make him well make prefabs and configure our balls and our rockets anyway this is all for this video i will see you in the next video if you like what you see comment share subscribe and like so that other people can see it also and i will catch you in the next video